Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to continue our series on getting started with Linux. And today we are going to actually be on the Windows desktop. And what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to make a live key. Now, a live key is when you take a USB drive. You can also do it with a CD. So it used to be called a live CD. And you can boot the computer off of these items. Now, to do that, there may be some extra steps you need to do in your BIOS. It just kind of depends. Usually what you do is you plug in a bootable USB drive, like this one here, into the back of the computer. And then when you power it on, you can access a boot menu, which is either either F9, F11, or F12. At most HPs, it's F9. MSI boards, I think it's F11. And most other boards out there, it's F12. That will get you into a boot menu where it should show you a list of all of the bootable options, and then you can select which item you are booting from. Now, if you're going to be testing out Linux a lot, what you might want to do is enter BIOS, which is usually either delete or escape or insert, sometimes F2. It just really depends on your computer. Getting into BIOS and changing the boot order. Put USB as the first boot order and then the hard disk as the second. What that's going to do is anytime a USB drive is put into your system, then it will automatically boot the USB drive. But when you boot, want to boot back into Windows, take the USB drive out, reboot the computer, and it will go immediately into Windows. So today we're going to talk about how to make one of these devices. And so uh, to do this, what we're going to do is um, you need a USB drive, and then we're going to essentially download everything else. So let's jump on over to Windows and see what we need to do. All right, so here we are on Windows 10. And uh, what we are going to use is you're going to first install an application that is called Hashtab. I have that right here on my desktop. Hashtab is going to be the easiest way to check the hash of a file. You want to check the hash because the hash of your file uh, is going to, uh, this is going to give you the ability to uh, verify that your ISO image that you download from the internet is the correct image. There was a period of time Linux Mint, which is my preferred distribution, had an error in it where somebody hacked their website. It wasn't a security issue in the distro itself. It was somebody hacked their website and pushed a malicious uh, image on their drive. So anybody who downloaded it and did not verify it, they may have installed a malicious version of the Linux distribution. So if you ch anybody though who downloaded it and checked the ISO images or checked the uh, hashtag of the ISO image, then what would happen is uh, they would have seen it was wrong and then they would have uh, gone in and found another copy or re-downloaded it. So if you don't know what a hash or anything else is, we'll cover what that is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to boot up a um, web browser. <laughs> and then we're going to find the hash tab application. So this is implbits.com. And then just click on their products tab and click on hash tab. Uh, if you are just doing this as a personal individual, then you can uh, go ahead and get away with the free one. If you are a business or you're planning on you know, doing a series of a lot of other things on Windows, you would probably need to pick up the commercial. So think about whatever your particular item is. You download that, uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to just double click on your executionable and install the file. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to add another tab in the properties menu when you right click a file and see uh, it's going to give you a tab that is called hash. All right, so I have actually already downloaded Linux Mint. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to download your distribution. So this works with more than just Linux Mint. It's any type of distribution. So what you do is you download an ISO image, .iso file. And what an ISO file is, is it is essentially a disk image. You can put it onto a CD. You can put it onto a USB drive. Anything that can boot off of a USB drive or a CD or anything else you can put it on for that matter will be able to read that and boot off of it. So you're going to click on your download button and then grab the download you want. So in this case, we're grabbing Linux Mint 19 Terra Cinnamon and we're grabbing the 64-bit edition. It is 1.8 gigabytes and just find a local mirror. I think I grabbed the one from Advanced Hosters and it took only about a minute or two to download. Now it says here, do not forget to verify your ISO. Now most of your distributions out there are going to have somewhere to verify an ISO. 
And what you want to do is find the particular version that you want. So in this case, we're using Linux Mint 19. And so we grab that and then they actually give you instructions. Now, I may not do a separate video on how to do this on a Mac. And the reason is verifying the image, at least on a Mac, is... Um, uh, verifying the image on a Mac is the same way as running Linux. You literally go into a terminal, you type in SHA256 sum, you can even leave out the B if you want, and then you can uh, just enter the name of the ISO image. Of course, you have to be in the directory where it is, and that will verify the image for you. Works on Mac, works on Linux. Windows doesn't have that option. They might have one in the terminal or in the you know command line uh, is what Windows is going to call it. Um, but here this uh, this hash tab is just a, a simpler option. Now when you click in on this file here, this is actually going to give you the hashes. So there are six different lines here. Uh, these are for your 64 and 32 bit cinnamon, mate, and XFCE. All right, so I went ahead and downloaded my distribution. So what this big string of characters is, this is called a hash, and it is specifically a hash 256, okay? SHA-256, which is a, uh, a type of encryption. So what this means is that every single file, if you run a hash of it, it's going to give a different unique number. So the computer really looks at the number to verify if everything is correct. The chances of two things having the same hash is perilously close to zero. And so this is a way to verify files that you have downloaded. All right. So we're going to come over here. We are going to right click on our uh, image. You can see it says mount. Um, we can burn a disk image if there were a CD burning utility installed. Um, I have uh, seven zip on here, so I could do that. Uh, but I'm going to come down to the properties menu and then you will see an extra item. If you are following along, you will notice that I have file hashes and you may not. This is created by the application. Now what it's doing is it's going to copy or it's going to create the hash of all of the files. Now the first time you do this, you're gonna to need to let wait for it to go and then we need to adjust the settings and then you're gonna to need to do it, let it go again <laughs> because the settings does not take the SHA-256 hash by default. Um, so we're gonna let it go and then here you can see it has SHA-1 MD5 and CRC32. Click on your settings button and then just find SHA256 and then you can turn off anything else you don't want. So I don't really care about anything else right now so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Click OK and now it's going to rehash. Now while it's doing that I'm actually going to grab the hash for the uh, appropriate distro so make sure that you are grabbing the right bit right Oh Lord, ask Cortana. I don't want to ask Cortana anything. Thank you, Cortana. Can I ask you to go jump in a lake? All right, so here um, I'm grabbing the Linux Mint 19 Cinnamon 64-bit. Come back up. Now, anytime you put something in the clipboard, it automatically appears here. And then if it matches any of the hashes it selected, it gives you this check mark, correct. So this tells you that this hash is correct. So the file that we downloaded is exactly the same that the Linux Mint website wanted us to download. There's no errors, there's no download uh, issue, there's no corruption in the file. So now that we have that done, we're just going to cancel out of there. The next thing you want to do is you need a application to burn the ISO image. Most of your instructions are going to say use um, uh, UNet Bootin. The problem is UNet booting for about three years has not worked on Windows systems for the most part. Um, a lot of people have tried it. There are multiple different OMG Ubuntu and other comment threads about it. Apparently after, I guess, version 5.8.5 or 5.8.5. I remember a 5 and 8 and a 5 in it. After that, the system doesn't work anymore. I've tried multiple, multiple times. I could not get UNet boot working in the last couple of years. So there is fortunately a new one has cropped up and this is called Rufus. So this is rufus.akeo.ie. And uh, this is a application is essentially the a very similar thing to uh, to what um, uh, UNet Bootin was. 
And so what we're going to do is come down here and you're going to download it. Now this is a portable application, meaning that it has everything inside the file to run. It doesn't have to be installed. You can throw it on a drive, um, carry it to a different computer, whatever you wanna do. There are some other versions. So you just go ahead and download that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to insert your USB drive, which I have forgotten to do. So since I'm actually recording this video on a, um, on a uh, virtual machine, I actually need to mount my drive. Where is it at? Ah, there it is. <laughs> All right, so now we, we see our notification. We have put this in. Now, the name of this drive is because I've already tested this application works prior to doing the video. Uh, this would be the name there that I get the notification for is whatever you've called it. It might be called files. It might just be called, you know, PNY, uh, crappy USB drive, whatever else. Regardless, that is now mounted and I should, emphasis on should, be able to see it if I navigate to PC. Um, so you can see that this is over here and what you might want to do is you might think about formatting it. I don't really need to format. I don't think, um, let's just go ahead and change it to uh, drive. We're just going to go ahead and do it anyway, just to give you the full experience, uh, and make sure and verify we're doing it. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, quick, do a quick format on that format is now complete. We can close. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run Rufus. Just double click on it. It's going to ask us would we like to run this. Origin, downloaded from the internet. Oh, it's evil. Um, okay, so we're going to select where we, we are installing it. So it's going to auto select the drive, the USB drive that we have inserted. Uh, we need to select whether we are grabbing, what are we're, we're grabbing, just grab the disk or ISO image and then select the file. So here I'm just navigating to my downloads, Linux Mint, and hit my enter button. Give it the volume label. This it's just kind of pulling it from the title. You could actually call this anything. This is not a bad title because it kind of tells you what's on the drive when you plug it into a computer, like what's on this thing? You know, I got like hundred of these things laying around. What's on this drive? I don't know. Plug it in. This tells me what it is. Okay. So, uh, fat you know, file system, just leave all this kind of stuff. Now we, you, when we hit the start button here, it's going to ask us two questions. The first one is, uh, actually it's only asking us one. Um, it, it was asking me two questions. There was something that was not, um, uh, not on the drive initially and it needed to go on the internet and download it. That was the first one. If you hit the other one saying something to the effect of, uh, you know, something's not on the drive. Do you want to go over to the internet and, and download it? Uh, it was had to do with one of the uh, image things. Then the answer is yes, you want to do that so that everything works. This one here is the second dialogue and this is going to ask you, do you want to write this in ISO image mode or in DD mode? So DD is like a full copy uh, over the system. The ISO actually allows some other options. And so we're actually just going to use the ISO is what you want to use first. If for some reason this fails, go back and do the DD, but you may have some limitations on the drive after that. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. It is giving us the warning. We are going to erase everything on the drive. So, you know, don't do this on your drive of family pictures thinking, oh, there's only 10 pictures on there. This is so small enough. No, this will wipe everything on this USB drive. This is not touching your hard drive, just your USB drive. Go ahead and click OK. And now what it's going to do is it is going to um, do its thing, which this is actually going to take about the three to five minutes, kind of depending on on the speed of the machine. Uh, this one here, I think I've given this four processing cores and six gigs of RAM, so it will not take as long as it did on my other test machine, which is not able to record video on. Um, so we are going to go ahead and copy this. Now, while we are waiting for this to copy, I'll just kind of pop myself back up in, on here. And I'm not, I'm not burning it to this particular drive. I have another drive I'm burning this to. So when this is done, this is going to be what is called a Linux Mint Live Key. A Live Key will allow you to do two things. The first is you can plug it in your computer, boot off of it. You can play with the thing without installing anything. Okay, uh, that will have an installer, so be careful. You don't want to accidentally run that installer and install on top of your Windows uh, distribution. You don't want to do that. All right, 
um, but it will allow you to play with the system. When you are on that live system, you can download applications, you can get the full Linux experience. It's just the difference is once you are done with that drive and you shut down the computer and pull the drive out, anything that you have done will not change. Okay, so when you reinsert it, any application that you uh, have installed is going to be gone. Any file you've downloaded is going to be gone. It's going to restore itself to the very copy we are adding right now. Okay, now the second thing is you can use that as an installer. So if you want to install that to your disk, maybe you want to install it to a secondary disk, or you can even take this disk, reinstall it to a second USB hard drive. So if you were to run the installation on the, what we are creating on another USB hard drive, which by the way has to be USB 3 or greater, then you can actually run this as an installed Linux on your computer. In that case, anything you download will be retained, any file will be retained, and it will be a completely separate operating system that is completely installed, okay? So now this tells us that it is done. We're gonna go ahead and close and let's go ahead and open up our files and go back to our PC again. And we can see that uh, it is, uh, okay, we can see here we have the, the boot items here. Now I, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and test the disk now. It should work just fine. Um, I, when I had tested this out to make sure this logic works, make sure these applications will work on Windows and all that kind of stuff, then um, it actually worked perfectly. I was able to boot it back into a different computer. So there is, if you are on Windows and you want to know how to create a live key, that is, uh, that is what you need to do. And I'm going to go ahead and list those individual applications in the description down below so that you can try those out. So uh, with that being said, thanks for getting to the end of this video and let me know uh, any, uh, what are the next types of things you really want to see covered in this tutorial series on how to get started with Linux. So thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.